Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlog here, and this lesson is uh, proving figures are congruent using rigid motion. This is a pretty fast, easy lesson, you guys. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Okay, so let's get to our essential question here. So how can we uh, determine whether two figures are congruent? Well, if they have a rigid motion, they're congruent, okay? And these are all rigid motions, you guys. So uh, and it's not all of them right here, but this is just a quick review we did in module 17.3. If x, y is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise, counterclockwise is going to the left like this, you guys, then it becomes negative y, x. Okay, and I'll show you with ordered pairs what's happened. It's easy to see the figure being rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then if you just pick a couple of points, and you'll see, I'll show you. And if x, y is rotated 180 degrees, and you just um, uh, take the opposite of negative x, negative y. If x, y is rotated 90 degrees clockwise, then it becomes y negative x. And 360 degrees just rotates it back into the same position right there, okay? All right, so uh, uh, two plane figures are congruent if and only if uh, one figure can be obtained from another by a sequence of rigid motions. And we've done lots of these already, like uh, translations. Translations are when we move it over and down or over and up, something like that. A reflection is when it gets reflected over a line. Uh, and rotations are when we do those, what we just talked about, rotating it 90 degrees or 180 degrees or or whatever. So so two or more figures are congruent if they have the same shape and size. So the angles are the same uh, opening and the and the side lengths are the same size. All right, so here we have a grid right here. We're going to determine whether the figures are congruent. Is there And if they're congruent, then there's rigid uh, transformation that maps one figure to the other. So here we go. So we'll look, we're looking at uh, the blue guy going to the red guy here. So do these look congruent? Well, they sure look congruent. Don't they look like the same size? Can't you see this blue guy going over and down? Okay, so you just figure out, just pick a point like this point right here. It goes over one, two, three, four. It goes down one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's a it's a translation, you guys, and we can map uh, the first one to the second one by going to the right four and down four. So this, <clears throat> excuse me, these are rigid transformations that maps one to another. And so using coordinate notation over to the right four down four is x plus four, y minus four. Okay, easy, huh? All right, how about this guy right here? Is, is this um, uh, a rigid? Uh, uh, tr transformation right here. And can you see this one being reflected over that line right there? Remember how we did it before? We'd get the midpoint of, say, K and P, and then we get the midpoint of, say, M and R, which would be this guy right here, and the midpoint of Q and, and L would be this guy. Hey, what would be uh, the midpoint of J and N? It'd be the same midpoint right here. But when you connect the midpoints, that's our reflection line right there. So we can map it uh, over that folded line. If we could fold this right in half right here, this blue one would fold right on top of this red one. So yes, that is. <clears throat> those are congruent. They're uh, reflections of each other. How about this guy right here? Okay, now they look like they're, they're, it's called similar. There's a whole chapter in geometry on similar things, but these guys are similar, but they're not congruent because they don't have the same size. Okay, so one's a dilation of the other one. So this one looks like it might be, I don't know what, half the size of this one right here. So it's a dilation of one half. Plus it got translated over and down too on top of that. So um, you can do the translation first or the dilation first. It doesn't matter. So decide whether these figures are congruent and then explain why. So how about these guys? Are they congruent? Yeah, they're just reflections of each other. So reflected over the y-axis right here. Remember, reflection over the y-axis is your xy becomes uh, negative xy. Okay, so if you have trouble seeing that, you guys, just pick a point. I'll show you that in this one right here. Okay, so are these guys congruent? Well, they sure look like they're congruent. Can you see this guy getting rotated this way? Okay, is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Looks like it's clock or counterclockwise, you guys, and it's 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation right there. All right, so we can map ABC onto triangle XYZ by a counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees around the origin. And those are rigid uh, motions also, you guys, so the two figures are congruent. And so counterclockwise rotation is XY becomes negative YX, all right? Now, if you're having trouble remembering this, just pick points, you guys. I just pick any two 
two points and so so this x y right here I, I said okay remember we're going from blue to red so this eight four look I, I'm sure you can see it being rotated and B becoming Y right there and then look at the ordered pair of, of Y negative 4 8 that's just X Y became negative Y X so if you're having trouble remember memorizing this rule as long as you can see it's rotated this way 90 degrees and then just pick some points and check out how this X Y is being related to this X Y and it gives you this relationship so that's a 90 degrees counterclockwise right there okay these figures um, uh, the figures shown are congruent, so I'll show, I don't have them yet. So find a sequence of rigid motions that maps one figure to another and then give coordinate notation for the transformations that's being used. Okay, so from blue to red, okay. So can you see blue to red following this pattern right here? Uh, it's a hundred now I um, you can you might be able to see where you can reflect blue over you know if we reflected blue over and then and then probably slid it over and up or you can do what's called a uh, and I'll do that in the next one I want to show a 180 degree rotation a 180 degree rotation would take this point right here and negate them so this this four six right here would go over to here and it would become um, uh, right there I'm sorry it would be it would be this guy right here it would be negative four negative six sorry I don't have that labeled right there okay so that's a hundred eighty degree rotation right there so x y becomes negative x negative y all right and then if we take can you see this green triangle there's my 180 rotation and then this green triangle went to the right and it just went to the right looks like it went to the right um, um, uh, uh, by one okay so a rotation of 180 degrees is um, x y equals negative x negative y that's 180 degrees and then we translate it to the right one and don't do anything with the y because it didn't go up or down any so it just got it just moved to the right one so the red guy rotates 180 degrees to this green guy and rotating 180 degrees is just um, doing the opposites of x and y and then take the green guy and just slide it to the right one which is x plus plus one right there okay you could also do this you guys we can do the blue reflected over here and then you have to slide it to the right and up just make sure you're doing your coordinate notation correct and I'll show you that with this one here we'll reflect it and then slide it okay so here um, the blue guy gets reflected over there so reflection across the Y axis uh, and then it's going to be slid to the right and then down and so just pick any ordered pair I'll pick uh, this guy right here it's going to end right there so it's going to go to the right looks like two because each square is um, actually to yeah to the right two each square is two and then it's going to go down um, two four six eight ten so to the right two down ten okay and then so uh, reflecting across the y axis is x y equals negative x y and then just pick any points and that'll help you solve which one's which right there okay and then lastly you guys so determine which angles or segments are congruent describe the transformation that can be used to verify the congruence okay and that just means is it slid or is it reflected and so so are any of these segments so let's look at the angles here okay the angle measures is it's the opening of the angles it's not how long the rays are this ray can go on remember the arrows go on to infinity I could have extended it way up here and extended this ray down here so which angle has this opening right here this one looks like it's an acute angle looks like it's a little bit less than 90 degrees this one looks like it might be a right angle so this one's not it here's another one that's a little bit less than 90 degrees right there there. so these two angles are congruent to each other and as far as segments right here look how this segment goes from G to H it goes down two to the right five and then this one goes down two to the right five so G H and E F are congruent to each other and angles B and C are congruent to each other and in both cases just a sequence of transformations and reflections uh, um, and a translation happens on that and that's all you have to explain on that you guys okay all right whoops I forgot to put segment bars across the top of those there should be little segment bars across the top let me do that real quick okay all right, so a little segment right there and a little segment right there. I send these to other teachers in my school district when I'm done. All right, and then finally, guys, let's answer a few questions. Can we say that two angles are congruent if they have the same measure, but the, the segments that identify the rays form 
that form the angles are different lengths. Well, that's what we talked about right here, you guys. This angle right here is congruent to this angle. So just because this ray and this ray are longer than these two rays doesn't say how the angles are congruent. So can we say that two angles are congruent if they have different lengths of the rays? Yeah, the definition of congruence in angles requires that only the angles between the rays are the same. The lengths of the rays don't matter. All right, can figures have congruent angles but not be congruent fingers? Figures? Fingers? <laughs> Um, sure. Um, uh, two figures have congruent angles, but different sizes. You know, like one is a is a shrunken vision or a, a magnified vision of the other one. Like looking through a magnifying glass, how it makes it bigger. They're they're called similar. They have the same angle measures, but the side lengths are different. And can we use transformations to prove that two figures are not congruent? Well, yeah. Sometimes if the dilation that has a scale factor that's not equal to one will do that. It'll shrink it or make it bigger or smaller, like this magnifying glass right there. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. If you're in my class, that would be your assignment. Take care.